So we always hear about live and touring musicians playing on big stages with big artists doing these crazy, crazy shows. But the reality is that when you get back home, most musicians have a session career. And the thing is, most people don't talk about how much money these studio musicians actually make. But after being in Nashville and being a live and session musician for some years now, I want to give you guys some insight behind the scenes of how much money studio musicians actually make. Now, before we get started, if you're interested in supporting this channel, feel free to check out my website, travisdykesmusic.com, where I have a whole bunch of merch and products that you can purchase to help support this channel and bring you more videos. Now, before we go into the exact figures and numbers on how much studio musicians get paid, in the studio world, there's two different ways that you can charge, okay? Which is the indie rate and the label rate. Some of you have probably heard this before, but for those who haven't, pretty much an indie rate is where it's an independent artist. That's why it's called indie. It could be a friend, it could be somebody who reached out to you on Instagram, basically someone who is not signed to a label. Now, the label rate is pretty much someone who is signed to a label and the label's paying for the song or for the record or whatever it is. And usually when you charge for a label, you charge a little bit of a higher rate because the label has more money invested and they're willing to pay more because this is a huge investment for them because they want these to see the song go high up the charts and make them back some money. Now, when it comes to charging an indie rate and a label rate, you could think about it. Sometimes I, when I started out, I would do $100 for indie rate and then maybe $350 for a label rate. Um, that's kind of changed over the years, just depending it because I, I don't necessarily do things for $100 anymore. But now, since I've been in Nashville and I've been here for years now, most labels here go by the musician union like wage scale, which is I think is around $300 to $360 for a session and different things like that. Which I'll have all the information for that in the, my description below. So if you want to see those scales and how much it goes, it's it gets really really detailed. Now, as far as average pay goes for what I've experienced as a studio musician here in Nashville, the average pay that I've gotten per song is probably around $100 to $150 is like I would say average range for a studio musician. Sometimes that could be very low, I, I would say, um, as far as like if you're doing this as a career. So I would say this is kind of a low, lower average. But a big thing in the studio world is that people are paying for quality and experienced musicians. Now, something else I want to show with this is the other side of like these people who are like Grammy award winning musicians, master scale level musicians, how much they are making per session. For indie rate, most times these guys can make, I've seen, I literally have seen this hiring people like $500 to $750 for a single song. And these are like really sought after people. It's incredible to get them. They could probably do these songs in probably 30 minutes or less just because of how good they are. So just imagine how, you know, $500 for 30 minutes, okay? If you did two songs in an hour, you're getting $1,000 an hour. That is one of the huge benefits of doing studio work is that you can be home and just work like a normal job, but actually be creating and making music. Now I will say a caveat to this, it does take some time and years to get to being able to charge at that level. Now, if you're like someone who's just getting into this, I would definitely not suggest you charging $500 a song. Oh my gosh, no. Like I don't even charge that for a song and I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. Now, something I wanna make sure I add is that each of these prices and you know amounts that I've talked about is for one complete take of a song. It's not like five takes or anything like that. So if you're going and you're doing this and you're trying to charge for it, all it is is that I'm basically going to give the artist or producer one entire take for the song. Now, if they want anything extra like a second take or third take, now you could probably negotiate that out in the price. Personally for me, sometimes what I like to do is do a complete take and then maybe the choruses or maybe a certain sections of the song, I may give them a variation, but I don't charge them extra for it. But that's just one of those things that you just have to know and negotiate with the producer or artist that you're working with. 
Now, something that's been a little bit of a hot topic over the years is that sometimes studio musicians play these bass lines or crazy guitar solos and melodies that literally make a song, like a song would not be what it is without it. It is not normal in the studio world, even to this day, to get writer's credit for things like that or composer's credit for things. Now, I will say there are definitely people who are starting to do that more, even like certain labels, different things like that, where they're giving like some points to people, which is just like a percentage of the song to musicians if they have like an iconic, you know, part that they created for it. But that's still not the standard, the industry standard when it comes to doing sessions. So just know as a session musician or studio musician, you're getting paid as a work for hire. So you're not necessarily getting a license or a percentage and you're kind of surrendering that after you do it. And that is, it's okay. Like don't worry about getting songwriter credit or producer credit for all those things at this particular point. Now later, if you're wanting to do that and if it's like a song that you feel like is, gonna, is a label song that you did that you think is gonna blow up, you could maybe ask about it but I would not get so hung up on that to where you don't, you just lose work. Now, something people have asked me before is like, are at-home rates about the same as studio session rates? And I'll say pretty much, sometimes you can charge a little bit less at, at, at home rate because you know, you're know you not having to leave your house. And if you're having to leave your house, you could charge a little bit of higher rate, you know, because gas, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's pretty close, you know, to what I charge. Now, I may charge a little bit less for my, uh, at home rates, but it's not like a hundred dollars less. It's like maybe 50 bucks less or something like that. Now I would say this to anybody who's wanting to become a session musician and trying to figure out what to charge. Don't overcharge too soon. Okay. This is a big thing because some people would be like, Oh, I'm going to do this and I need to make $300 each session. And this is my first session. That's not something you need to start out doing now. I, I think you can do that. If that's something you really wanna do, you wanna be like, hey, I wanna charge $500 for a session and only have two sessions in a year, feel free. But the thing is, is when you're getting started, you want to get more consistent sessions, getting you know with people and getting a good partnership with people to be able to get more work through them, especially if you wanna stay home. If you, get, if you have a friend that's a producer that's sending out different things, he could build your rate into you know what he charges a, an artist or different things like that. Think about consistency and not just getting a big payday at the very beginning. Now, if you're somebody who has a lot of experience and you're just like, if I'm gonna do these studio sessions, it better be worth it. Hey, if you got years of experience and you've done this for a while and you've got notoriety, feel free. Like that's, that's your prerogative. <laughs> now, the last thing I wanna cover today is that if you are interested in becoming a session musician, to do studio sessions, it really depends on location. There are certain cities that have more studio sessions than others. You can look at, you know, Los Angeles, New York City, Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, and even Dallas, Texas actually is a pretty huge music town. But these are areas that would probably have more uh, studio sessions, even studios that you could work at than most states and areas in the United States. Now, if you're someone who has a lot of experience, a lot of connections when it comes to producers, artists, different things like that, and you're doing pretty much everything at home, location doesn't matter as much, but when you're first starting out, location will probably matter the most so you can get connected to people who are really doing this for a living. Now, the main takeaway that I want everybody to have in this video is that you don't have to be a live touring musician to be able to make money to pay your bills. You can be a studio musician and make a living at home. But I will forewarn you, this is a field that a lot of people wanna go into. So the barrier to entry is a little bit higher, you know, because of course, who doesn't wanna have to leave home to make money? But the thing is, is that to get into this, there is a certain barrier that you're gonna have to get through when it comes to either maybe moving to a location, really going out of your way to connect to people, you know, really going out of your way to learn and gain experience. Because the thing is, is that if people are gonna pay you to do a session, you've gotta give them something. You gotta give them value through your experience, value in how you communicate, value in how fast you 
finish a song and the quality of how you do it before you can start getting more work. Just know that you can do this. It may take a little bit of work. It may take a little bit of a grind at first. All you have to do is get past that barrier and you'll be getting there. Now, if this video has helped you in any kind of way, please let me know in the comments. And also let me know if you like these financial type videos. This is something new that I'm doing this year. So let me know as well in the comments. If you wanna support this channel, feel free to check out any of my affiliate links in the description below to where if you click and make a purchase through those links, this channel gets a kickback to bring you more videos. Also, don't forget to check out my website, travisdykesmusic.com to where if you make any purchase to anything on the website, it helps support this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna know how much live musicians get paid, check out this video right here.